Morning, boys and girls. Okay, so today we're gonna have a real short lesson because I know we already went over land and sea breezes. But this right here is basically a diagram of global winds. Now, we talked about this the other day and we said that global winds are winds that blow throughout the globe. The local winds, like the land and the sea breezes, they only blow in a certain area. Like, we have a local wind here, the land and the sea breeze. Anywhere that has water and land near it, they're going to have a land and a sea breeze. Well, with the global winds, you don't have to have a body of water near you in order for them to blow over you. So if you look at this from the top of the world, we got the polar easterlies, the prevailing westerlies in the purple, and then the trade winds in the green and the brown. And then there at the middle line is the equator. So we're in the northern hemisphere, as it denotes in the left-hand corner. So this is the way the winds blow in the northern hemisphere. Now, some of you may ask, why do these winds curve? And the main reason these winds are curving is because when the earth rotates, these winds kind of change direction. And it's kind of a crazy little formula we're going to talk about later. Um, but we're just going to talk about the winds today. Uh, so if you look at the bottom there at the equator, the dividing line between the top uh, part of the earth and the bottom part of the earth, of course, the southern hemisphere is on the bottom. Uh, that first line, the longest line there in the brown and the green are going to be called the trade winds. And the trade winds are a very, very famous wind. You've probably heard the trade winds talked about before in a Disney movie. They talk about them a lot. They're a very famous, famous wind. They are also the strongest of the three winds. The trade winds blow pretty much continuously all the time. And the reason they call them the trade winds is because people used to use those winds to go from one spot to another to trade items. From, you know, Africa to the Caribbean, they would go and they would trade fruits and vegetables and all kinds of arts and crafts. So they called them the trade winds. They blow from the east to the west. So they're going to be an easterly wind because they come out of the east. And we're going to talk more about this later. This is kind of a confusing concept to talk about wind direction. Uh, the second band up there above the trade winds is going to be the prevailing westerlies. Now, that purple, that purple area, that middle section, is going to be the winds that blow over us all the time. Now, I know we do have a local wind, and our local wind blows pretty much every day, but the prevailing westerlies also blow as well. And for us, they blow from the west or the southwest, and that's basically how our land and sea breeze blow as well. So it's kind of tough to tell when the prevailing westerlies are blowing, but they definitely do. And then up at the very top of the world, up near the tundra and the taiga, are going to be the polar easterlies. Those are really easy to remember because if you think about a polar bear and the polar easterlies, they're both cold, okay? So the polar easterlies blow the same direction as the trade winds. They blow from the east towards the west. So they're going to be an easterly wind as well. The middle one, the prevailing westerlies, are a westerly wind because they blow from the west towards the east. Um, now these three winds all have um, certain characteristics to them. Since the trade winds are down there near the equator, well, what kind of wind do you think they're going to be? You know, the equator is really, really hot. It's a very, very wet, humid place. So the trade winds are going to be a really warm, humid wind. They're going to be very stuffy. The prevailing westerlies, they blow over a desert. So they're generally really, really dry and hot. So in the summertime, we get that quite a bit. When they blow over the over the desert, they're very dry. They don't pick up a lot of moisture and they blow right over us. We get most of our moisture from the Gulf of Mexico, which we'll talk about later. Now the polar easterlies are a very, very cold wind. Cold air is generally always drier than hot air. So it's a very dry, very, very cold wind. Now, boys and girls, I know I've told you that the uh, the land breeze and the sea breeze, they kind of change directions between the night and the day, depending on where the hot spot is, where the uneven heating is. Well, these three global winds don't change direction ever. They always hold their pattern. 
Now, sometimes they don't blow as hard as the local breezes. Sometimes they blow harder. Uh, sometimes they're influenced by other weather systems. But for the most part, they are generally blowing in these directions all the time. Now, in my next lesson on global winds, we're going to talk about the southern hemisphere, and you're going to notice that the patterns for both the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere are going to match because of the rotation of the earth and the way the hot air from the equator tries to go to the poles and the cold air from the poles tries to dump to the equator. And that's going to be another lesson. That's kind of a confusing lesson. So we're not going to start with that today. Um, so we're just going to talk about these three winds and I'm just going to get you to answer a few questions on them so that we can get the ball rolling. I will tell you that this is not an easy thing to learn. Um, why they blow is not an easy thing to learn. Learning the names of them should be relatively easy. So I'm expecting you to know the name of the winds and which way they blow from where to where. So I'm going to give you a Google Doc and do the best you can. And I guess I will be answering your questions later. I hope you guys have a good day.